When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. You know, many people never get beyond that stage. Clement of Alexandria said in about 200 AD that many people are just content to be as milk-fed infants, never getting into the real meat of the Bible. And as a result, it leads to a lot of problems. See, many people don't believe anything that they can't see or hear or feel or touch. Therefore, they don't really believe that there's another world, a spiritual world out there. They may want to believe in God, but they believe in them superficially. They don't really understand that there is a world of spirits, just as there's a world of physical people. And unless you understand the fact of spiritual warfare, it's very difficult to really understand what's going on in the world today. But most people don't accept that. And therefore, if they can't see it, they won't believe it. At the same time, many people don't understand what they see. They don't accept what they see, or they don't look beyond what's actually visible. Do you know, if you take a handful of forest earth, just a handful, there's more living organisms in that handful of earth than there are people on this planet. Wow. <coughs> a spoonful may contain miles of mycelium from fungus, but we can't see it. We don't even see some of the larger things that are on earth. In the forest, in Utah, in a natural, in a national forest, there's one aspen tree that's been there for a few thousand years. Wow. That one tree, proven by DNA, extends over 100 acres in size and has 40,000 trunks. All shoots from one tree. But we don't see that unless we study it. You see, people don't believe what they can't see, and they also don't understand what they do see. So when people look around and look at themselves and look at the world, they get confused. They want to believe in a loving God, but they can't because of what's happening. What's happening in their own lives? The death of loved ones, the death of children, the agonies, the illnesses that go on. <coughs> All the problems that exist, but they don't see what may be underlying it. You see, it also says in that same verse, for now we see in a glass darkly. We don't see everything. But then, then we will see him face to face. And then, although we know now in part, we shall know everything, and they will know us, just as we are known then. There was an article in a paper in June 2008, which explains this. It goes like this. As I faced my maker at the last judgment, I knelt before the Lord along with all the other souls. Before each of us laid our lives like a square of a quilt in many piles, an angel sat before each of us, sewing our quilt squares together into a tapestry that is our life. But as my angel took each piece of cloth off the pile, I noticed how ragged and empty each of my squares was. They were filled with giant holes. Each square was labeled with a part of my life that had been difficult. The challenges and temptations I was faced with in everyday life. I saw hardships that I endured, which were the largest holes of all. I glanced around me. Nobody else had such squares. Other than a tiny hole here and there, the other tapestries were filled with rich color and the bright hues of worldly fortune. 
I gazed upon my own life and was disheartened. My angel was sewing the ragged pieces of cloth together, threadbare and empty, like binding air. Finally the time came when each life was to be displayed, held up to the light, the scrutiny of truth. The others rose, each in turn, holding up their tapestries, so filled their lives had been. My angel looked upon me and nodded for me to rise. My gaze dropped to the ground in shame. I hadn't had all the earthly fortunes. I had love in my life and laughter, but there had also been trials of illness and health and false accusations that took from me my world as I knew it. I had to start over many times. I often struggled with the temptation to quit, only to somehow muster the strength to pick up and begin again. I spent many nights on my knees in prayer asking for help and guidance in my life. I had often been held up to ridicule, which I endured painfully, each time offering it up to the Father in hopes that I would not melt within my skin beneath the judgmental gaze of those who unfairly judged me. And now I had to face the truth. My life was what it was, and I had to accept it for what it was. I rose and slowly offered, lifted the combined squares of my life to the light. An awesome gasp filled the air. I gazed around at the others who stared at me with wide eyes. Then I looked upon the tapestry, the tapestry before me. Light flooded the many holes, creating an image, the face of Christ. Wow. Then our Lord stood before me with warmth and love in his eyes. He said, every time you gave over your life to me, it became my life, my hardships, and my struggles. Each point of light in your life is when you stepped aside and let me shine through until there was more of me than there was of you. You see, people won't understand that unless they accept the spiritual side of life and the fact that we only see things in part, not completely. Isaiah puts it this way, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, say the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The only way we can understand this is to understand we can't accept life in the Bible as a child. We have to understand it as it really is. Meet for those who will study it Learn from it and accept it. Something to think about.